but I grew up having mayonnaise on the inside of my grilled cheese. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. You know, we have so much fun when it comes to anything and everything food. Yes. And everything, anything tequila. So uh, we are getting together with all of our friends during New York City Wine and Food Festival for the Caviar Presents Taco and Tequila After Dark, hosted by the cast of The Kitchen and our morning show. Of course, Katie Lee is a our favorite cast member in The Kitchen. Aww. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. I was so excited when I got the email to come here because I love coming to see you guys. And we love Aww. it when you come to see us too. But Katie, uh, Katie, her kitchen isn't in full in full operating mode, so she didn't cook us anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not in the full swing. We just moved, and so I'm not fully unpacked. And to put on top of that, I have a two-year-old, and it was a rainy weekend, so we were climbing the walls, basically. Uh, see, oh, yeah. <laughs> these kids, they take up... I'm, they, they really are just a pain. <laughs> but congratulations. That's Thank awesome. How, by the way, so uh, how's the kitchen going? The show, oh, one of my favorites. We love the kitchen. We have such a good time. We just finished taping, and every time it's, it's like it just going to hang out with my friends it never feels like work and i know that you know people say that and you kind of like roll your eyes like oh i'm so sure it doesn't feel like work it really doesn't like we have a good time and we eat so much good food you do mm. yes it doesn't look like it's catching up to you <laughs> it, it has mine has the old covid 45 oh i i <laughs> i gained 45 pounds when i was pregnant i lost most of it but i'm not what i was before that's you know for what? sure B- yeah, you know, I'm enjoying life. Exactly. Yes, that's but, what it's all about. Mm-hmm. But you and Jeff and Jeffrey and Alex. I love Alex. Yes. Where's Sunny? Is she there anymore? Sunny's coming. Yes. Okay, good. I love her. Love. Sunny is so much fun. What, okay, so we were talking in the back, like, what are you cooking? Here, it's getting colder here, and especially in the mm-hmm. Northeast. And so, of course, without thinking a second, guys, Katie's like, boom, here's what I'm cooking now. Here's what I'm looking forward to cooking. Go. Braising. Braising. I, I am so <laughs> into braising when it gets cold. I love to get out the Le Creuset Dutch oven mm-hmm. and put on a big roast and have that going all day. And the house smells so good, and it's simmering and bubbling, and you go in and peek in, and it, you look in, and it's like cooking down, and everything's getting soft and tender. Mm. See, the reason why we love braising, and Danielle, you should appreciate this. Danielle, this is her season. She loves Halloween. Yeah. Mm. Braising is like having a witch's cauldron. Yes, it oh, is. Yeah. Isn't it? Really? But you have to pretend it's not a, a pot roast. You have to pretend it's like a little child. <laughs> <laughs> like from, from Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. Have you seen Hocus Pocus I haven't too? seen the new one. I'm excited to it's, see it. It's it very good? cute. Yeah, yeah we're starting cute. to watch it already. Uh, yes, straight, Nate. Okay, can you explain braising? Is that the same as broiling? <laughs> No, No, very different. Same letter. Okay, (laughs) explain braising. Okay, so let's say you take your hunk of meat. You got your your chuck roast. You want to season it up, sear it in the pan, and then you're going to add to the chuck roast some liquid and let it come to a simmer, take it down to a low simmer, cover it, and let it cook for a couple hours. So you don't even use the oven. You just use this. You can. can. You You can. can. You can do stovetop or in the oven. Yes. Yes. But it's about searing it and then letting it simmer in liquid. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And I that, have done that before. I just didn't realize I was braising something. Yeah, you know what? A lot of people <laughs> hear the word braise. They're not quite sure what that is. It's something you've done yeah. a million times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on, braise. You do it in your slow cooker. That's essentially braising. <gasps> Yeah. yeah. Okay. You use like a crock pot. That's braising. I just learned oh. so. Th- Does you your go. family expect you to cook for like every holiday because that's what you do for a living and you're the best? So they're like, oh, she'll do it. <laughs> yeah, she'll Katie, just do it. Katie, you'll do it. She'll, I mean, she's in charge. I want to do it because I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to the <laughs> kitchen. And so I want everything to taste the way that I want it to taste on the holidays. So I do kind of take over. No one complains. <laughs> but we are ooh. doing a big Thanksgiving at at um with our family this year so they're all coming to new york and we're we're gonna roll it out mm-hmm. what's that gandhi so it is also soup season yeah so oh, here we go can... oh, oh here we go here we go <laughs> all right get ready for this is there an argument that soup is just sauce with stuff in it <laughs> no no damn it <laughs> <laughs> i still say yes <laughs> but the argument is there that some Thick soups could be used as sauce. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, um, according to the definition of it, sauce is something that you dip other things in, and soup you can eat by itself. But if it's tomato soup, that is in essence then a sauce because you dip stuff in it. So I true. say 
Yeah, soup is just yeah. sauce See, with I, stuff in it, and it triggers like, Elvis. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like tomato soup's like iffy. Like sometimes if it's too thick, I feel like I'm eating a bowl of marinara. Yeah. Like I want tomato soup to be thin. Yes, mm. mm-hmm. it is tomato Thank soup me. season with your grilled cheese sandwich. Mm-hmm. Now, do you do mayo or or, or uh, butter on your grilled cheese sandwich? I do butter on the outside, but I grew up having mayonnaise on the inside of my grilled cheese. Mm. So my grandpa would make me grilled cheese, white bread, do the butter on the outside, and he'd do a thick slice of Velveeta with mayonnaise in there. Oh my gosh. I know that this might be controversial. It's the <laughs> most delicious thing you will ever eat in your life. I'm not complaining. See, Danielle, I love mayonnaise. Now, Danielle, oh gosh. It, it's, look at her. Danielle cannot stand the thought of mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, God, why, give it and, to me. And this is why I cannot order grilled cheese anywhere, because I'm afraid that they use the mayo, and I just order automatically in my head it's like there's mayo on this like the whole thing. so i can't Wait, do it can i do this no this is going to be disgusting oh i love disgusting okay, Danielle, Tell me. just imagine a spoonful no. of mayonnaise no. <laughs> no, she's not exaggerating that's, that's real Okay, I'm glad we, okay. <laughs> I can sit with my sandwich, and if I'm by myself in privacy, my sandwich and the jar of mayonnaise, stop, and like stop, take Katie, the knife stop. and put it on each bait. Katie, stop. Just imagine. <laughs> That's, oh, there she goes. <laughs> I hate you both right now so much. What do you much. put on your sandwich? Mustard? Mustard? Mm. Or oregano with a little oil and vinegar? You know, okay. something like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you people are killing me. I've known her for 25 years and oh. she's always been like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. So, Could you imagine if that was their reaction when they were trying things on TV? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is why This is why I could never like be on one of those cooking shows where they put something in front of me. They're like, no, sorry. I have wanted to have that reaction when I'm judging some competitions before. There have right. been moments where I've wanted to go, Bleh. but oh, I, Have you I, ever spit I'm something back nice. out? Um, have I ever spit it out? I don't think I've spit it out. No, wow. I've, I've probably wanted to. There was one time I was judging Beat Bobby Flay mm-hmm. and it was a morning episode. It was like eight in the morning and the secret ingredient was sardines. Oh gosh. And I mean, <laughs> I, sardines are like tricky anyway. Right, right. And at eight in the morning and when someone's like trying to do it in a competition, it was disgusting. <laughs> I was having the uh, uh, reaction for sure. Mm-hmm. That was an interesting show to be on. I I, I, uh-huh. I was on with Katie Lee, and uh, Bobby was you know going up against someone doing something. And Bobby over way over spiced whatever he was cooking, almost uh-huh. as if he did it on purpose because it was like, blah, it was not good. Do you think he does that? Do you think he does that does to he... throw the show sometimes so he doesn't win? No, I think that he genuinely competes. Okay. And I, I think sometimes there's just like a hiccup and it's a total anomaly if if he doesn't win. You know, when I was on that show, you kept saying, you know, you got to go after him. You're, you got to like rip mm-hmm. him to shreds. And I didn't know I was supposed to be so rude. And then after the show was over, like, you were okay, but you really should have ripped Bobby to shreds. I'm like, I get. I said, if, if, I said, if you ever invite me back, I swear to God, there'll be, there'll be blood. Yes. Uh, Scary had a question. Yeah. You know, I watch weekends with my mm-hmm. girlfriend. I love, we love the kitchen. And Thank I you. especially love the holiday theme episodes. Mm-hmm. One time you made like the, the pomegranate, pomegranate blood and dirt. Cocktail, uh-huh. the show you took to <laughs> Halloween last year. Question. Mm-hmm. How do you guys come up with these ideas? Are these submitted or do you really have these concoctions? Like, like, okay, so yeah. here's how we do it. We have a great team of producers and culinary producers, and they come up with the idea for the theme of the episode. Then they decide who's going to do act one, two, three, four. And so they'll say to us, okay, um, Katie, you're going to be act one of this show. We'd really love for you to do some sort of stew for Halloween. What's your idea? And I might say, okay how about a white chicken chili and let's make like a little um cheese jack-o'-lantern to go on it you know so we come up we go back and forth i'll give them like two or three ideas for a recipe and then they go back and put the show together and come back and say to me okay the chili's gonna work in that so write a recipe for it i go test it and send it back to them and then we make the episode you actually write your own recipes oh yeah yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> let them let, make them do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I'll do my testing. So Ryan loves it. My husband, when we have a testing week, you know, I'll be at home making like seven recipes a day when we do that. Oh my oh, gosh, wow. that'd be awful living with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love this text. The text says, Katie is the best. I love her on Beat Bobby Flake. Aww. She is such a pest. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good news, right? Bobby would say the same thing. <laughs> so, so Katie Lee and I have something in common being from the South. And we grew up with eating Southern great food. I mean, I mean mm-hmm. anything that some people would call trailer park and fun. You know, I mean, you. what, what is your favorite down-home like, I miss my mama's cooking thing oh, to make. Biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Yes. How do you do your gravy? Do you put some... Uh... I do uh, brown the breakfast mm-hmm. sausage, mm-hmm. And, which when I came to New York, I found it kind of hard to find breakfast sausage. Right. Um, so you get that tube of sausage, brown it up, and then you just put some flour in there and let that brown for a couple of minutes and then add whole milk to it. And let it simmer until it gets nice and thick and pour that over some buttermilk biscuits hot out of the oven. Mm-hmm. I know, right? <laughs> it sounds so easy. I would do that and burn a house down. <laughs> it is really easy. I, I'm getting the meat sweats just here. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, um, do you have also a refined palate? Do you like going out to like the like the really really hard to get into restaurants? Um, you know, I I like simple food for the most part. I think it's fun every once in a while to go do one of those fancy meals. But for the most part, I like simple food. Like, give me a roast chicken and potatoes and I'm so happy. Or a great, perfect plate of pasta. We went this weekend to Lilia. Have you been there? Yes. We, get, we could never get in. And then my friend is friends with them. And so I said, I have a babysitter. Please help me get a reservation. So we got a, a table and we had a great time. Allie, didn't you go to Lilia recently? Yeah. yeah. How do you where, find a microphone? That one. Yeah. I did. I, I used Elvis's name. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it. It is. It's so good. Uh, we had such good service, too, and I feel like that makes a really big difference. Without doubt. Mm-hmm. All right, so out of, and this is a tough one to answer, so I'm not going to ask for your number one favorite of all time, but which name a chef that is on TV that we see a lot that you really truly believe does it right almost every single time. Does it right? Yes. Oh, well, Jeffrey Zakarian is like amazing. You work with him. Yes, everything Jeffrey makes is perfection. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Anything that he's cooking, I I always pay really close attention because he has a lot of little nuances, little things that he does. I I think Jeffrey's awesome. See, I'm an Ina fan. I, w- I was going to say Ina. Ina. I love Ina. Me too. And I, I'm, oh, she's the queen. I'm asking her to I, I want to be one of her gays. <laughs> <laughs> she has her gaze. I want to be. I want to be an Ina gay. I don't think that's asking it. for too Ina much. Gay. All right. Not. Well, let's talk about our night we're spending with, yes. of course, uh, the cast of the kitchen at the uh, New York City Wine and Food Festival. Uh, Jeffrey Zakarian will be there. Katie Lee, Sonny, and Jeff and Alex, who I love. She's a recent addition to the show. Is she not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The last couple of years. Yeah. She's fantastic. Okay. Tickets uh, cost about 185. Keep in mind, we are feeding. People here in New York City, God's love we deliver is, it's been around since I moved to New York and we used to deliver food for them and now they're delivering oh, yeah. food to so many people. So uh, the thought of someone needing a meal just mm-hmm. makes me mad. That's why the New York City Wine and Food Festival is out there to deliver it with God's love we deliver. So that's why it's 185, but you're drinking tequilas and you're eating tacos. Yes, there's so much food. You get to try so many great places, so many restaurants that are participating and, and donating their time and their food, and um, so many great drinks, too. Yes. And all of us, yes. all the cast of the kitchen, we're going to be there. Elvis is going to be there, all of you guys. So this is going to be a really fun night. The New York City Wine and Food Festival is always just pure joy and fun. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Now, which one of you on the cast drinks the most? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Who am I, who am I hanging out with that uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Who, I would say who drinks the most. Um, I will definitely be imbibing because I love margaritas. That's mm-hmm. probably my favorite cocktail. Uh, so I'm looking forward to having a margarita that night. But I can usually only have about one. That's my limit. You sound like me. My little white, lightweight self over here. Yeah, all, all I can think is, how am I going to feel tomorrow? I'm going to wake up and feel bad, so I'm just going to stop at one. Because it's different when you have kids. You have to yes. think, like, the next day you still 
have those kids. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're still right. waking they up. They don't go away. <laughs> yeah, there's no like laying in bed and no. sleeping it off or no. or watching Netflix all day. Yeah. Well, I, in, at past uh, wine and food festivals, I've been known to hang out with Rachel Ray for a drink or two. <laughs> she was always fun. she's always a fun date. Uh, anyway, so it's going on. It's a Saturday, which is kind of unusual for us to do this mm-hmm. on a Saturday, October fifteenth at Pier eighty six, the home of the Intrepid Museum. Uh, so if you want to know more on how you can pick up some of the remaining tickets, go to nycwff.org. Or can we just put it on our socials? Yeah, we'll we'll do that. Oh, by the way, Gandhi has her own taco named after her, but they will not be they they will not be served at our event. They will not be because they're in Jersey City. But you should try my taco. It's at Gringos. It's called the Gandhi Tuna Tar Taco. <laughs> it's oh, so good. Have, you ever, do you, have you ever had a dish at a restaurant named after you? Um, no, but I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> what can you I need, do to get a, a dish named you after one. me? <laughs> now, you, there's someone out there that's going to name a dish. I, I've had <laughs> Elvis Duran chicken parm somewhere on Staten Island. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I bet oh, we I did the same thing, parm. which was show up every day like a creep and order the same thing. And then we finally <laughs> said, they put your name on it. Name it after, yeah. You know, chicken parm's my, that's my, that's my oh, game. Kryptonite. I love yeah. chicken parm. <laughs> well, who's your favorite chicken parm? You, you can't answer that. It's like asking <laughs> someone's favorite pizza in New York. There's no way to do that. I will tell you this. Uh, even though it's Times Square and it's a lot of tourists, we always have fun at Carmine's. Yeah. I haven't been there in years. It's so I gotta good. gotta go back there. Our friend Glenn is the, you know, the chef mm-hmm. for the corporation. We went there with friends and they were just, it was just always great. It, it's it's solid. That's always my New York memory. The first time I came to New York City with my mom, we went to Carmine's. Just kind of happened in it before we went to a Broadway show. So it it has like this warm memory for me. I love it. Their chicken parm is... You know me. I always say if you just want to pull down my pants and spank me with a chicken parm... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we, you may see that at the Wine and Food Festival. And that chicken parm pizza at Quality <gasps> Italian. Yes. That's yes, amazing. That is so good. We have all the things, the honey you can drip mm-hmm. on it. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, again, if you want to if you want to join <laughs> Katie and, of course, the cast of The Kitchen and all of us at the festival on our tequila and tacos night. I just reversed them. It's now tequila more important than tacos. <laughs> uh, Priorities. Go to my Instagram. Uh, at Elvis Tran, and uh, it, it'll be posted for you. Is there anything else we need to cover? Oh, um, make me a spaghetti pie. My favorite dish. That oh, you've I ever love had. the spaghetti oh, pie. You know, I am going to give you one little chicken parm. You got to look up Jeff Morrow's recipe. It was actually on this past Saturday of the kitchen. Right. He cooks the chicken parm so that it doesn't get soggy when you put the sauce and the cheese on and put it in the oven. It's crunchy. He does it separately. He, then he takes a platter. Put sauce and cheese on it, melts that in the oven, and somehow slides it off the platter on top of the chicken. So a cascade of cheese oh goes on to the chicken. Oh, oh my sounds, God. That's like heaven yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like chicken parm <laughs> oh. porn. You got to look it up. Damn. Pardon me. I'm covering my nipples with my, <laughs> with my, with my sweater. Uh, uh, it's uh, fabulous. Katie, do you have any, uh, any books coming out anytime? Are you working on a new one? Um, I am not working on a new one right now. Uh, I'd like to do a children's book. I've kind of written it and kind of making some adjustments to it. And then I'm going to try to sell it. Um, I had a cookbook come out. I guess that was last year. It's not complicated. Right. And and I actually had a movie this summer as well. I, a Hallmark did, movie. You did? Did you guys know about this? No. no. Yes, it's called Groundswell. It's based on a novel that I wrote that came out in 2011. The movie yeah. just came out. So you can stream it. Good for you. Thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. That was a lot of fun. Now, your children's book, is it about cooking kids? It is. <laughs> it's about cooking kids, no. It's about cooking for kids. Oh, okay. I mean, talk about, a, talk about a great braise. <laughs> awful. I, awful. It, come on, it, it's hocus pocus season. We can talk about it. Uh, Katie Lee, thank you for coming in today. Thank you. I think I might be chicken parm for Halloween. I've been trying to think of a costume. Maybe oh, really? give me that idea. That's a good one. With dripping or, cheese. Or tacos. Maybe in my family we can be Dragons Love Tacos. That'd speaking be nice. of children's book. I wouldn't mind going as like a meatball. Oh, there you I'm, go. I'm sort of shaped like one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn it. All right, Katie Lee, thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. I can't wait to see everybody at Tacos and Tequila. Yeah. Buy All your right. tickets. All right, save, save a margarita for me. We'll see you there. <laughs> Bye. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.